Firebase Auth offers authentication with Facebook, Twitter, GitHub, and Google. It can also incorporate into an existing custom web application system and handle phone number authentication with SMS. In this video, we're going to be focusing on registering and authenticating users using Firebase with email authentication. Our application that we're going to build will look exactly like this. It'll accept a user email, a password, and sign them in, and it will also register them as well. The first thing we're going to do is create a new React Native application. Since we will not be requiring any packages that rely on native code, we can safely use the Create React Native App CLI to create a new app that uses the Expo SDK. If you do not yet have the Create React Native App CLI installed on your system, then you can follow the quick start instructions on the React Native homepage. So let's start by running Create React Native App, and then we'll call this Firebase React Native. Once our app's installed, let's run the app in our simulator. Since I'm going to be using the iOS simulator in this video, I can do this by running yarn run iOS, or if you're on Android, you can run yarn run Android and have the app load in your connected device or your emulator. So first I'll need a CD into Firebase React Native, and then run yarn run iOS, and this will start it up in my simulator. Now that my app's installed, let's create the new Firebase project from the Firebase admin panel. Open up console.firebase.google.com in your browser, and then click on Add Project. You'll first need to give your project a name. For our case, we'll just call it React Native Firebase. Now select your location or your company's location from the country, region, drop-down list. I'll just keep it with the United States. I already have my project created, so I'll just close this out and then open it up here. And this is what you should see when you first create your project. Now that our Firebase app has been created, let's open this up in our code editor. So the first thing I want to do is remove all of the boilerplate code. So I have these three text tags that I can remove. And I can remove everything in here except for the flex inside of our container style tag. Now we have a blank slate on our application. Now the next thing I want to do is install our dependencies. The only thing that we have here is our Firebase dependencies. So back in our terminal, we can just do npm install dash dash save Firebase. And while that installs, I'll go back into my editor. And then I'll just import star as Firebase from Firebase. Now we need to call our lifecycle method component will mount. And then we'll create a config variable called const firebase config. And that'll be an object of API key. And that'll be an empty string. And auth domain will also be an empty string. And from here, we can do firebase.initialize app and Firebase config. We'll pass Firebase config as our parameter, as our argument, sorry. Now we need to get these configuration variables. So back in our console, let's go to overview and then click on project settings. And we'll need to copy this web API key here. So that'll be our API key. Now we need to set up our auth. So the first thing we do is back on Firebase, we click on authentication and then choose uh, sign a method, and then click on email password, and we just need to enable that and save it. Now that we've enabled it at the bottom of the screen, just scroll down and copy this, authorized domain, and we'll set that back in our code editor. Just copy that in and paste it in. So that's it for our configuration and setup. Now let's start creating our input fields and our components and start working on our form. So the first thing I'm going to do is create a new folder called components. And from within here, I'll create a new file. And the first thing I'll do is I'll create an input.js. And we'll need to import React from React. And we'll also be working with our a view component, style sheet component, text, and a text input. And we'll import that in from React Native. Uh, 
Next, let's create our const input, and we'll pass in a fat arrow function, an empty fat arrow function for now, and we'll just return a view. And within this view, we'll have a text tag that we'll use for our label. For now, we'll just keep this. We'll pass in a hard-coded text label, and then we'll use a text input So we'll need a couple things here, but for now we'll just leave this empty. Now let's create our styles. And it'll be style sheet dot create. And we'll create a container. Give it a margin top of 10, a width of 100%, a border color of E, 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 and that's just a light gray color, and then a border bottom width of two. And then in our text input, we'll actually use some destructuring. So we're gonna expect a couple of props from our component. So we'll use a label, a value, on change text prop, and a placeholder, and secure text entry. And now we can just pass these into our text input as well. So we'll do autocorrect and we'll set that to false and on change text. And we will set that to our props dot on change text. And we use that here. We we've destructured our props here. So what we're doing here is we're just taking this is basically like saying props dot on change text. But with our destructuring, we don't need to duplicate that code. So we can keep it a little cleaner. And then our placeholder will just be placeholder. And our style will be styles.input. And our secure text entry will be equal to secure text entry. So that's just going to be a Boolean value. And then our value will just be value for now. And let's give this a container, styles.container. And then our text label will have a style of label. We'll call that label. And then we'll give it a padding of 5, a padding bottom of 0. So this is just padding left, top, and right of 5, and a padding bottom of 0. And we'll give this a font color of 333 which is a very dark gray, and then a font size of 17, and a font weight of 700. And I'll scroll down here to give you some more screen real estate here. And we'll give it a width of 100%. And finally, let's create the style for our input. So we have our input and we'll do a padding right of five, a padding left of five, oops, and a padding bottom of two, a color of number 333, again a dark gray, and a font size of 18. So this will be the styling for our text input and a font weight of 700 and a width of 100%. That should be good. So next we just need to add in our styles here. So this will be style equals styles.label. And that should be it for our input. Now we just need to export it. And we'll give it a named export of input. Now let's start in our form. So back in app.js, in our side of our empty view, let's do uh, input. Well, first we need to import our input. So we'll need to import input from components slash input. And now we could use our input here. Let's give it a self-closing tag. 
It looks like I have a border property here. Uh, style sheet. Border is not a valid property. Okay, border color is what that should be. Sorry. Border color of EEE. -E -E. So we can see our label in there now, and then we can see our text input. So the next thing I want to do is actually give our app, we'll give it a padding of 20. So we have some space to work with here. Now that I have my input tag here, and it seems to be working as expected, what I'll first do is I'll give it a placeholder of enter, and this will just be a string actually, enter your email, and I'll give it a label of email. It looks like I have my font weight set in properly here, so I'll just remove this. Yeah, so we'll just use the default font weight for that. Next, I'll create an input for our password. So this will just be password and enter your password. I also want to do add a secure text entry to this as well. So when you type in your password, it should turn it into dots. And on your email, it should leave it as email. And it looks like I didn't do something properly here on the input as well. So back on here, let's take a look at this. Oh, looks like I have this hard coded still as well. So I'll just do label. Great. Now we can give our app a default state. And to do this, we can do a shortcut of email. I just type state equals email and password. We don't need to do a constructor method for this. And when our input is updated, what we'll want to do is set the on change text for the email. I'll do email and then give it a fat arrow of this dot set set state um, email and a value of this.state.email. We'll do the same thing for the password as well. So let's copy that, paste it in. So password, password, and then another one here. Great. Okay, now I want to actually create our button. So next I'll create a new component called button. Let's call this button.js. From button.js is first import React from React. And what importing React does is gives us access to our JSX templating so we can use stuff like text and view and text input. So that's, since we're actually not typing React anywhere, that's what that'll do for us. Uh, and then we'll need to do a style sheet. We'll need a style sheet, a text component, a, and a touchable opacity. And we'll import that in from React Native. Next, let's create our const button. And we'll do some more destructuring on this. And we'll expect the on press. And we'll expect children as well. So props.children will be our text. And uh, our on press will be our touch event as well for the button. And we'll need to return a touchable opacity. And that'll have an on press prop equal to the prop that we pressed in here. So I'll just give that on press. And then a, that's it actually. And then we'll close that. And I could actually put this on a single line and remove that closing tag. And next I'll need the text and I'll expect the children here for the text. Now I need to create my styles object, and it'll be style sheet dot create, and our button will have a margin top of ten, a padding of twenty, a width of a hundred percent, so it'll take up the full width on our screen, and uh, a background color of. 0A E E F and that'll give us a nice blue color and a border radius of four and we'll align all the items in the button so the text tag to the center. 
Now let's create the text styling. So on the next line, I'll just create text. Color is white and a font weight of 700. So it'll be a bold text tag and a font size of 18. And it looks like I also need to export it as well. So I'll export button. There'll be another name to export. So back in app.js, let's import that button that we just created. And we'll import that in from components slash button. And we need to now call that, uh, let's see. Oh, components, sorry, that was a typo. Let's refresh that. And now I can call that button here. Oops, that should be self-closing. So we can call that button in there and then pass in some text. Oh, looks like I didn't actually apply the styling to the button. So we'll do a style of styles.button and a style here of style equals styles.text. Great. So it looks like we're coming along here. And finally, what we'll do on here is just make sure that our on press event is working. So on press, we'll just do a console. Actually, you have to do a fat arrow function here. So a console log of pressed. And we should see this inside of our console. So when I press this back here, so I can see that I've pressed it right here. So thanks for watching. I think that's going to be it for this video. On part two, we're going to go into authentication and taking the user input. Uh, I think we did pretty good for today. So we have these reusable form components. So we have a text input and a button that we can use later. And we're going to go through the process of registering users in Firebase in our next video. So thanks for watching. And if you enjoyed this video and would like to stay up to date with our future videos, be sure to hit that subscribe button down below and that bell button next to it to get notified. And to get the latest news straight from StatCast right into your inbox, go to statcast.com and sign up for our free weekly newsletter and you'll receive our latest guides and screencasts. Thanks for watching. Bye.